Come on, let's give the Lord a good hand clap of praise tonight. He's worthy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody thankful to be in the house of the Lord? Anybody thankful to feel His presence tonight? Why don't we just lift up our hands and reach out to Him. Let Him know, Lord, if you're passing by, pass by me tonight. God, if you're going to touch somebody, touch me tonight. Come on, he's, he's, he's as close as the mention of his name. I wish somebody would begin to cry out that name, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm thankful to be in the house of the Lord tonight. If you will, grab your Bibles. Turn with me the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse number 24. Man, it's your turning there. Man, I want to give honor to my pastor in his absence. Thankful he would allow me to stick around and uh, preach here tonight, heading out this weekend to go to Illinois and then come back and pick up my trailer and going up to northern Indiana. But I'm thankful I get to be here one more time before I head out. Enjoy the privilege to get to be here. And I honor him for allowing me to come back. And I uh, also want to give honor to my bishop, Elder Brother Van Lu. The man love and admire him very much. I stopped by the uh, Last night, my boy wanted to play with Schaefer, so came over and stole Schaefer for a little bit, and uh, I was thankful. I picked his brain for a second. I just asked him a question about some old tapes and things he had preached and taught and looking for it. And I love whenever I can get him to start talking and, and uh, just listen to my elder talk. I'm thankful that he's always been there for me, and I love and admire him tonight. Hey, Amen. I was over here today trying to feel after the Lord and Lord just laid a thought in my heart and um, I try to be mindful of the time it's still pretty early but uh, I may not preach to everybody but I uh, maybe there's just one person here tonight this will help and if it only helps one person and everybody else you can check out and go home and I'll try to help the one and if it ain't for nobody then maybe it's for me so uh, Matthew 27 and 24 if you're there say amen Bible says, when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person, see you to it. Then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scorched Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe and when they had plaited a crown of thorns they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand and they bowed to the knee before him and mocked him saying hail king of the Jews they spit on him and took the reed and smote him on the head and after that they had mocked him they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him and as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were coming to a place called Golgotha, that is the place of a skull. Amen. Verse 32 says, And they came out, and they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, and him they compelled to bear his cross. I want to preach tonight on the thought, the cross you were never meant to carry. The cross you were never meant to carry. I know it's a different title, but hang with me. We'll go there. So if you will, if you will, over this house, put your Bibles down, lift your hands up, and just ask the Lord to have his way in the remainder of this service tonight. The church say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Begin to look in the Bible. The Lord has set his face, face like flint towards Jerusalem. And he is heading there towards his impending crucifixion. He is walking that final days of his life towards Calvary as we all know and there is the disciples around him and they begin to come to him and they tell him they're, they're trying to find out, Lord, when, when you come into your glory, can we sit on the right hand and 
Can we be a part of your kingdom? And three times on this journey, he comes to them and he stops and he tells them, Can you drink of the cup uh, of, that I'm going to drink of? Are you, are you willing to drink of the cup that I, I'm going to partake in? If you look at that cup, it was a cup of suffering. It was a cup of, of trial. It was a cup of a cross. It was a cup of, of scourging and bruising and pain. And he asked them, Are you willing to take of the cup? Are you willing to drink of the cup? And they begin to travel a little farther and he tells them, and Jesus says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and, and follow me. I, I, tonight I want to make it clear, I'm not preaching about this cross tonight. It's still demanded of us that we are willing to take up our cross. If we can drop the monitors down just a little bit, if you don't mind, if but he tells them you must be willing to take up your cross and to follow him. There's still a cross that we must be willing to bear. We must be willing to take up our cross daily. Uh, we must be willing to take on the name of Jesus. Uh, we must be willing to pick up, uh, amen, this cross that we're supposed to carry uh, and walk with it every day. Uh, there's still a cross the church uh, has to pick up. If we're going to be His, uh, we got to take part in His cross. Uh, we still got to be willing uh, to take up the cross every day uh, and follow after Him. Uh, it's still a cross of separation. Uh, it's still a cross of Jesus name baptism uh, it's still a cross uh, of Holy Ghost speaking in tongues uh, amen this world may not like the cross uh, but is there still somebody here today uh, that's willing to take up the cross uh, and follow after him uh, in the good times I'll follow him uh, and in the bad times I'll follow him uh, I'll take up the cross uh, and follow Jesus Hey Amen. We got to be willing to take up that cross and follow him. But he, he, he begins to tell his disciples, you've got to take up the cross and you've got to be willing to follow me if you're going to be my disciples. And he begins to tell them, he says, listen, I, I, I know that you've got to be willing to drink of the cup, the cup of suffering, the cup of, of, of my death. If, if you're going to be a part of me, you, are you willing to drink the cup and Jesus begins to let them know that listen this life that living for me it's not always roses and mountaintops and everything good that there is days that you have to walk through the valley uh, of the shadow of death uh, he said there's going to come days that a man uh, is of a few days and he's full of trouble uh, amen he on another place Jesus said uh, that offenses will come uh, amen there's going to come a day when somebody's going to gossip about you there's going to come a day when the doctor's going to hand you a report uh, that you don't like. Uh, there's going to come a day when good people walk out of your life. Uh, amen. There's going to come a day uh, when good things are going to happen uh, to bad people uh, and bad things are going to happen uh, to good people. Uh, and it's in those times Jesus said, uh, I want you to understand something. Uh, that this walk with God, if you're going to be successful, uh, you can't do this on 50%. Uh, you can't do this on 75% you can't do this thing on 99% if you're going to be successful in living for God you're going to have to do it with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and all your strength what are you preaching brother coffee when the trial comes and when the test comes and when the doctor's report comes and when people gossip and walk away you better have a backup plan and that backup plan better be uh, casting all uh, your care on him uh, for he careth uh, for you uh, I came to preach to somebody uh, that walked into abundant life on a Wednesday night uh, carrying a heavy load uh, carrying a heavy burden uh, I come to let somebody know uh, hey man you can't carry it on your own uh, you can't make it through life uh, on your own uh, you need a God uh, you need to pick up that burden uh, and cast it on him you can't walk carrying it it'll kill you carrying it you gotta pick it up and hand it to the master 
Come on, I may just preach to one person tonight, but let me preach to that one person uh, that walked in here tonight uh, that you're carrying a heavy load uh, and you're wondering, how am I going to make it through another day? Uh, I came to give somebody the answer tonight. Uh, the answer's not in you trying to carry it on your own. Uh, the answer's not in you trying to stumble uh, through the valley carrying a heavy burden, uh, but the answer uh, is casting all your care uh, on him. Why? Uh, for he careth uh, for you you. I want you to know it's not the will of God for you to deal with that on your own. It's not the will of God for you to walk stumbling around carrying a heavy load. Jesus paid too high a price on Calvary for somebody to carry that. I don't know what you walked in here carrying but somebody needs to cast your care on him. I don't care if you've carried it one day, ten days or ten years. It's time to lay it down. I know care uh, how long you've carried it uh, tonight's the night for somebody uh, to cast your care on him uh, for he careth uh, for you <sighs> begins to tell him casting all of your care on him for he careth for you hey amen there's times in life God knew Hey man, that there's going to be things handed to people. Uh, he understood that there's going to come days when things are placed in our lap uh, and we wonder how do I make it through another day. Uh, hey man, I was listening. I was in the prayer room and an elder called me over and began to tell me uh, what was going on in their life. Uh, hey man, and in their family. Uh, and I began to think. Uh, I couldn't imagine trying to go through that uh, without a God. Uh, I couldn't try to imagine uh, living the life uh, and handle the tragedy of death and, and lies being taken out of the way uh, without a God. Uh, I came to preach to somebody tonight. Uh, don't try to handle life uh, on your own. Uh, don't try to carry around the baggage of life uh, on your own. Uh, but I came to preach to somebody. Uh, it's time tonight for somebody to pick it up uh, and lay it down. Uh, it's time for somebody to carry a burden uh, to the foot of Calvary uh, and say God uh, here it is. Uh, I don't care one day is too long to carry a burden. Uh, ten years is too long uh, to hold on to a burden. Uh, hey man, I'm preaching to somebody. Uh, it's time to lay down uh, the heavy burden. I'm not preaching tonight about a burden for the lost. I'm not preaching tonight about a burden for the sick and the, and the dying and those that are going through trials. Uh, amen. When God tells us to pray, I'm not preaching about that. Uh, but I am preaching to the person uh, that you wake up every morning uh, and there's that burden on your shoulder uh, and you go to bed at night uh, and you got that burden on your shoulder uh, and the enemy tries to tell you, see, uh, God's forsaken you. Uh, see, God don't love you. Uh, if God loved you, you wouldn't go through that. Uh, if God loved you, you wouldn't have to carry that. Uh, and when you first started carrying it you could run real good uh, but now we're talking three and five years later uh, still holding on to a burden uh, of what happened in the past uh, hey man there comes a time uh, when you gotta say you know what uh, I'm picking it up uh, and I'm moving it out of the way uh, I'm laying aside uh, I'm casting my care on him uh, I'm laying it down at the feet of Jesus uh, because he cares uh, for me Bible says Jesus we all know the story standing there before Pilate and he begins to be scourged and mocked and ridiculed and spat upon and put the crown of thorns on his head and stripes on his back and they pull him out and they hand him a cross and he begins to walk up Calvary with that cross carrying the cross and then in the portion of text I read tonight, I don't believe the other Gospels relay this, but I believe it's Matthew where I read tonight, gives the account of a man by the name of Simon. And he's from the area of the Cyrenes. And he is a faithful man from the best that I can find. He loves God. and He's traveled all the way to Jerusalem to fulfill the Passover. And Hey man, to do his godly calling, what he's supposed to do and what he's called to do. And he comes all the way to Jerusalem and, and he makes his way there and 
he's trying to do his best to, to please God and to fulfill the law. And I didn't come tonight to preach to the person that's out slipping and sliding and messing around, but I, I came to preach to that good saint of God that knows what it's like to try to be faithful. That, hey amen, you do everything you know to do. I pay my tithes. I give in the offering. I'm faithful to church. When the, the church doors are open, I'm there. Whenever it's prayer time, I'm in the prayer room. I, I came to preach to that member of, the, of Simon's. I came to preach to that member of Abundant Life that, that you know what it's like to try to be faithful. And Simon shows up to Calvary that day as there's a crowd and he begins to make his way up and begins to look around and he sees this man carrying a cross and, and he's standing there watching and all of a sudden a Roman soldier looks over and says, Simon, you, sir, right there, come over here. I, I want you to carry this cross. Uh, and I imagine as Simon standing there in his mind thinking, God, uh, why me? Uh, I traveled all the way here to just try to fulfill the Passover. Uh, I'm going to get a hold of this bloody cross uh, and it's going to violate me from being able to fulfill the Passover uh, this is going to mess up all my plans uh, this cross that's being handed to me uh, is going to mess up everything uh, that I had planned for my life uh, amen I don't know why I'm being handed a cross uh, why not be handed to somebody else uh, why don't this, this trial be placed uh, on the back of somebody else uh, and Simon of Cyrene uh, has to come out and pick up a cross uh, and I began to think as I read this uh, Simon had two choices uh, he could stand there uh, and get bitter uh, that he was handed a cross uh, he could stand there uh, and get frustrated and aggravated uh, why did I have to go through that uh, why was that handed to me uh, and he could stand there and hold on to it uh, and die holding on to it uh, or he could understand uh, that I was never meant to carry this cross uh, and he could pick it up uh, and carry it to Calvary uh, and lay it down. I came to preach to somebody tonight that walked in here carrying a heavy burden. It's not the will of God for you to stand there in the middle of the road, Simon, carrying a cross. You got to pick it up, carry it to Calvary, and lay it down. Come on, Simon, where you at tonight? You walked in here carrying a cross of disappointments, walked in here carrying a cross of hurts and pains. Don't stand there and die in the middle of the road. Simon pick it up lay it down at the feet of Jesus the Bible says he was bruised for our transgressions he was wounded for our iniquities amen it begins to go up and down the list the chastisement of our peace was upon him amen it begins to go all of the things that he went to Calvary for how many times do we stand in the middle of the road holding on to things trying to handle it on our own when God's saying I'm standing here at Calvary I'm doing more than just washing away sins I got peace I got joy I got healing I got deliverance standing at Calvary when's the last time a saint of God said you know what I don't need remission of sins tonight I don't need to repent but I do need to lay down a heavy burden I've been carrying it for too long I've been carrying it and it's going to kill me pick it up Simon and lay it down at the foot of Calvary I remember, I know everybody knows my stories. That's one of the fun part of evangelizing. You get to tell your stories over and over and nobody knows them. When I'm home, everybody knows, knows all my stories. But I remember, I remember whenever we, everybody knows we lost our first baby. We was trying. And I remember times my wife came home. And I remember walking over to the church, driving over to the church, one, two in the morning. I'd come over and I'd sit on the front row of the church, midnight, one in the morning. I didn't even know how to pray. I couldn't even come up with the words to say. And I remember about that time, I remember my bishop, my pastor at the time, had stood and prophesied about there was going to be Babies born out of wedlock if people didn't listen. And I was watching as at the same time 
I'm trying to be faithful and live for God and be the youth leader and pay my tithes and give. I'm watching judgment be poured out on the other side. And what would have been judgment on them would have been a blessing for me. And I remember coming into church and sitting down on the front row and not even figure knowing what to pray, what to say. Uh, Lord, I don't even I don't even have the words uh, to put it all together. Uh, and I remember one night when I drove over here, uh, I began to tell him, Lord, uh, I'm not able to bear this on my own one more day. Uh, God, I, this is going to kill me. Uh, and it was in those moments I felt like the Lord let me know, uh, Jonathan, you got to pick it up uh, and lay it down. Uh, yeah, you went through it. Uh, yeah, it hurt. Uh, yeah, you're disappointed. Uh, but if you're going to make it, uh, you got to pick it up uh, and lay it down at Calvary. Uh, I came to preach to somebody tonight. Uh, don't die uh, in the valley of disappointment. Uh, don't die uh, because somebody hurt you uh, and failed you. Uh, pick it up uh, and lay it down at Calvary tonight. Uh, God is still greater. Uh, God is still more powerful. Uh, but you got to be willing uh, to lay it down. I imagine as Simon was standing there holding a cross with the decision, do I hold on to this or do I lay it down? Do I stand here and carry it another day or do I lay it down? I began to think Calvary was on hold until Simon decided what he was going to do with his cross. Acts 2.38 was on hold until Simon decided what he was going to do with his cross. There was a lame man sitting at the gate beautiful that could never get his miracle until Simon was willing to lay down that cross. And I came to preach to somebody tonight I don't know what you're going through and I don't know what God has on the other side for you but in this moment of decision somebody tonight needs to make up in their mind I may not like it I may not understand it I may never understand it but tonight I'm going to pick it up and lay it down at the foot of Jesus Remember a while back for a message, I was studying eagles. And I, I came across something that fits tonight. They studied eagles. Eagles, these great majestic birds, strong wings. The ability and the strength they have is incredible. And they found that most of the times eagles will swoop down into that, that river, that lake, that whatever it is. And they'll sweep down. And they'll get a hold of a salmon or fish, whatever it is. They'll pick it up. And they'll carry it away. But they found something. There would be times when that great bird would sweep down into that water. And he would get a hold of a salmon or a fish that was too, strong, too big for him to fly with. And they found that that eagle had a tendency. Rather, all he had to do was let go of it and he could fly away. But those eagles had a tendency in them that when they got a hold of it, that they refused to let it go. And they watched as some of these eagles when they got a hold of something that was too heavy and they, they would begin to flap their wings that much harder and they would begin to, to, to swing and to try to fight and get that their body up in the air uh, and all they would have to do at any moment was just let go of the fish uh, and they could have flown away uh, and made it to live another day. Uh, amen. I came to preach to somebody tonight. Uh, that's a mighty eagle in the house of the Lord uh, and you serve God for a lot of time uh, and you know what it's like to be faithful I don't want to see another uh, mighty saint of God fall apart uh, because they're not willing to let go uh, of something. Uh, I don't want to see another saint of God uh, pulled out of the church uh, because they won't let go uh, of something. Uh, I came to preach. I don't know who I'm preaching to, uh, but I'm trying to preach to that one person tonight uh, that walked in here carrying a heavy load. Uh, it's time to let it go. Uh, it's time to let it go uh, and let God uh, have his way. I 
I watched. I remember sitting there. God, when's it going to work out for us? When's it going to happen? And I watched as the whole time I sat there trying to carry it by myself. There was people that come and pray for me, but it, it, it didn't really matter. I was carrying something down on the inside that only I could carry at that point. And hey man, it seemed like nothing was working. Uh, but when I finally said, you know what, God, uh, I don't care what anybody thinks of me. Uh, I don't care who's around me. Uh, God, I gotta lay this down. Uh, if I'm gonna make it another day, uh, I watched as God began to work out. Uh, and today I got two little miracle babies. Uh, I came to let somebody know tonight I don't know what you're going through but it's time for somebody to pick it up walk down to the foot of Calvary and say God I'm laying it on an old fashioned altar I'm casting all my care on him for he careth for you well brother coffee I was hurt well brother coffee they don't have a right don't you understand what they did? Don't you understand what I've had to go through? I remember. I'm home. I can take my time for minutes. Only 13. I remember. Elder Brother Vanley was preaching one night. He walked up. He asked for a cup. And they brought a cup out. I believe it was. He had Jeffrey Vanley come up. Big, strong, young man. Handed him his cup with just this little bit of water in the bottom of it. And he walked him over there. And he stood off to the side and he handed it to him. He said, you hold that cup out. And so Jeffrey stood there. About the first five minutes of his message, he stood there. And Brother Van Lee asked him so every so often, you doing okay? Yes, sir, doing good. And Brother Van Lee could preach a little longer than I preach. And about 30 minutes into his message that, that arm was starting to shake a little bit as he was standing there. And I remember by the end of his message, as Jeffrey was standing there holding that little cup, probably only weighed ounces that was in it, as his hand was shaking and that arm was starting to drop and, and he was starting, it was getting heavy. I remember him making the point, Elder Brother Van Lee making the point about how there's some things, small things, you sit there and you hold on to it. And for a while, it don't look like it's hurting nobody. It don't look like it's hurting nothing. I, I'm doing just fine carrying this. Uh, but you hold it long enough and there'll come a day uh, when that arm will start to get weak. Uh, and you'll start to get heavy. Uh, and you won't be able to hold it up too long. Uh, Simon, you stand there long enough uh, holding that cross. Uh, and eventually the death that you're holding on that cross, uh, eventually the infection will get in your life. Uh, and it'll destroy you. I, I came to preach to somebody tonight uh, don't wait till it's too heavy uh, don't wait till it steals your soul uh, don't wait till it steals the joy uh, in your life uh, tonight would be a good night uh, for somebody to say you know what uh, I'm picking it up uh, and I'm laying it down at Calvary uh, I don't care what anybody thinks uh, I've been carrying a burden for too long uh, I've been walking around with disappointments uh, for too long uh, I've been walking around carrying uh, a report of what I've had to face uh, for too long. Uh, somebody needs to pick it up, uh, move it out of the way, uh, and lay it down uh, at Calvary. Hey Amen. If the music will come. The Bible says, casting all your care on him, for he careth for you there's times in life when God looks out at us and he watches us stumbling down the road Simon carrying that cross where God wants to look over and he cares for us so much that he just wants to walk over and pick it up and put it on his shoulder and walk it down to Calvary and bear it on his own but that's not how God is God says there's times he's going to show up and he'll walk right beside you all the way there. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. 
You're not going to face the storm and trial on your own. You're not going to face the offenses on your own. You're not going to have to drink the cup of suffering on your own. Amen. Jesus was walking right beside him all the way there. Amen. But when he got to Calvary and he stood there with his arms outstretched ready to lay down, he had to know, was there going to be a Simon that was willing to say, you know what? I've carried this as far as I'm supposed to carry it. I've walked through this trial as long as I'm supposed to walk through it. I've test. I've walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, amen. The last day that I'm going to walk through it. Uh, I've carried this burden for the last day. Uh, and tonight I'm going to pick it up. Uh, I'm going to walk it down to an old fashioned altar. Uh, and I'm going to lay it down. Uh, amen. Is there somebody here that knows what it's like? Uh, that says preacher I've been carrying a burden uh, for a long time. Uh, amen. I've been hurt carrying the wounds and the hurts. Uh, amen. Of past issues in my life. Uh, and tonight I want to pick it up I want to walk down to an altar and lay it down at the foot of Jesus tonight come on we had a power packed weekend I beg God God let me preach let me preach about revival backsliders coming home and chains breaking and people praying through and people coming out of wheelchairs and victory and taking our city and expanding our, 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 our tents and taking land from the enemy I felt like the Lord told me no, no there's a work I want to do in some people's lives there's some things I want to break loose in some people's lives but they got to be willing to pick up their cross and carry it down to the foot of Calvary and lay it down Amen. I, I watch the Bible says in Psalms 52, 55, and 22. He says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. He said, You come to a place where you cast all your cares, cast all your burdens on me. In that place when you think you're too weak to take another step, I'll sustain you. And I will make sure you don't move. I came to preach to somebody who walked in here tonight carrying a heavy burden. And you're wondering, preacher, how am I going to make it through another day? How am I going to make it through another month? How am I going to make it? I came to let you know the answer is real easy. You can come out on the other side of the attack standing firm. And all you have to do is lay the burden down. Let God bear it. Let Him wrap His loving arm around you and plant you in the house of God. And the Bible says you won't be moved. I feel like tonight there's strength in the house. There's healing in the house. There's peace in the house. But somebody's got to make their way down and say, I'm laying it down at an altar. I know I've been hurt. I know I'm wounded. I know I've been disappointed. I know I've been betrayed. But I'm laying it down at an altar tonight. Come on, let's stand all over this house. Come on, I know I didn't preach to everybody. But is there somebody here tonight that you walked in here carrying a heavy burden? You put your head on the pillow every night and when you wake up, the first thing you do is you reach over and you slap it. Slap that cross back on your shoulder. And you're wondering, how am I going to make it to another day? Come on, I came to preach to you tonight, sir and ma'am. A couple of years ago, it wasn't too much to carry. Six months ago, it wasn't too much to carry. But now every time you come to the house of God, you wonder, hey man, God, how am I going to make it another day? And your knees are starting to quake and your arm is starting to tremble and you're holding a burden there. Why don't tonight you walk down to an altar and say, God, I can't bear it one more day on my own. I, I can't handle it one more day on my own. Today I'm going to lay it down. I, today I'm going to hand that cup uh, back to the master. I, today I'm going to hand it uh, and say, God, you bear it. 
going on. When Simon got to Calvary, uh, he found a God with his arms stretched out wide. Uh, he found a God uh, with his arms stretched wide. Uh, I want you to know Jesus is standing here tonight, sir or ma'am, uh, with his arms stretched out wide. Uh, letting you know I love you. Uh, lay it down and let me bear it. Come on, if you don't need to pray, help somebody pray. Help somebody lay aside their heavy burden. Come on. Come on, the cross you was never meant to bear. Lay it down. Lay it down. Lay it down, Simon. Come on, you're a mighty eagle. You're supposed to be flying high. I see you out there flapping your wings. And tonight's the night for somebody to lay it down and fly high again. Come on, I'm done. There's strength in the house tonight. There's help in the house tonight. Come on, he's here.
Come on, can we lift our hands all over this house before we do anything else, before we close out? Come on, would somebody lift their hands and just let the Lord touch you today? Jesus, we love you. Come on, it's okay to admit, God, I need you tonight, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God, you're so good to us. Amen. I'm thankful for the word tonight, for the coffee. You know, I was thinking as he was preaching, uh, for whatever reason, life as a way of teaching us that you are supposed to always be uh, perfect or have it all together. And sometimes it takes a lot to admit, Lord, it's me. I'm, I'm in need tonight. And uh, it's like you brought us back to that reality tonight of it's it's not ours to bear. It's all his to begin with. And why should we worry? We got the Lord on our side. I'm thankful for his message tonight. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, don't forget, um, this Sunday is Friendship Sunday. And it uh, starts at 11 a.m. And if everybody could bring it, is it a side dish and a dessert or just all three? All three. Side dish, dessert, what else is there? And an entree. You can tell I don't pack a lunch very often. <laughs> Bring all three. A side dish. Everybody say side dish. Bring a dessert. Bring a really good entree. Bring all three. So we'll see it here Sunday. Um, I'll send out a one call for Friday for the youth. We'll figure out our music, but we'll, we'll have something here Friday. Um, is there prayer? Does anybody know? Is there prayer Friday here? going to go out on a limb and say no. If that's wrong, they'll send out a one call for prayer, but I'm going to say no, no prayer. So we'll figure out Friday Youth Wise. Uh, yes, ma'am. Well, let's uh, if we can, let's let's all extend our hands up here towards Brother Bert. Let's before we dismiss, let's pray for this families we leave. God, we love you, Jesus. Ask you to touch the birds today, God. Lord, you know the need. You know what they're going through, God. I'm asking you, Lord, to give them strength today, God, in their time of need. God, he preached tonight about taking our needs to the throne of Jesus, and God, we lift him up as a church body tonight, God, that you'd bring strength in their family, God. Touch their lives, God. Touch their need, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God. We thank you. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Say amen. 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 If you could shake hands with somebody around you, drive home safe this evening. You all have a good night. God bless you. You're dismissed.